One of the things that's really becoming difficult is to choose which cause to support, whose signs to hold when I'm out marching on weekends. What's your advice for people who are trying to figure out how to spend their time and energy? Compassion is a big deal these days. You know, the awakening of compassion in humanity is, is quite obvious. Um, everybody has a cause, and everybody's cause is different. And that should tell us something, that causes are not absolute. There's no one cause that is, this is the bad problem, the rainforest, mistreatment of animals, or pollution, or, you know, there's no one, or everybody would have the same cause. Everybody has a different cause. Small group uh, doing this, small group doing that, some trying to correct politics, some trying to uh, correct the economy. So as we are spiritual students and we're trying to move more into a, an intuitive understanding of life instead of the understanding of life that the authority figures on the planet try to get us to follow, we kind of come to realize that on the one hand, spirit's in charge. Spirit can do anything spirit wants to do. Okay? Now, spirit does not violate the free will of human beings. You have to ask in order to get help. In, and perhaps the most powerful prayer you've heard me say before is the word help. Right? That brings everything into play on your behalf. Just simple little prayer of help me. Now, causes are quite significant. On the one hand, we could say about people's causes, there's nothing wrong out there. You know, a God of love, an all-powerful God, would not let there be anything wrong. So from an absolute perspective, there is nothing wrong on this planet or anywhere in the universe. This is an audiovisual training program that we're immersed in. There is nothing going on outside of us. 100% of everything that's going on goes on in our mind. There is no other existence than what's happening in our mind. So people have causes for a reason, or several reasons. We should not take them seriously from the point of view of believing that harm is being done or damage can be done. That's not possible. Okay. On the other hand, as karmic beings, as beings who are students in earth school, students trying to progress, work their way up to awakening, we have to deal with our own mistaken belief systems. And our own mistaken belief systems give us our causes. So we can, now I, I'm going to say something that I don't believe here, but it's kind of useful. It can be a helpful story if we know it's just a story, okay? Karma says, first of all, karma says time is linear, which time is not linear, but we need to believe that it's linear for Earth School to do its, have its function for us. And karma would say, at some time in the past, we made a mistake. We were guilty. We harmed something. Again, we know that's not possible. It was just part of the training program, just part of the education process that we were going through. But when we feel guilty about anything in the past, it becomes a cause as we move down the timeline. In order to ease my own guilt, I'm going to try to solve the problem that I created. So I was a warmonger. All right, in this life, my cause is peace. I'll be a peacenik. Now, perhaps our cause is to be anti-war. That's not effective. Being pro-peace can be effective. So we want to watch it how we handle our cause there. If thoughts held in mind create our reality, we don't want to be anti-war because then we're thinking about war. We want to be pro-peace because then we're thinking about peace. Okay? So people have causes. Whatever, look at... And we judge other people as being wrong. So a useful story might be, I have a cause. My cause is whatever it might be. Mistreatment of animals, okay? Or, or uh, 
ruining the habitat for animals or something like that. If I will accept the possibility that I have that particular cause because that's my subconscious guilt because I'm the one who destroyed the animal's habitat in the past, that'll make us a less judgmental about people who are doing that now because I did that. I was the person who caused the problem. And I'll understand that I have this cause in order to forgive myself. I think if I can make up for it, you know, I'll get rid of my guilt. Most of that's happening on a very subconscious level. So it's not something we're aware of unless we want to be aware of it. We're saying, how can I believe that everything is okay just the way it is? How can I believe that there's God and there's leukemia? You know, this, this is a difficult thing when we start thinking about these. Many people gave up the idea of God because they said, if there was a God, there wouldn't be all this harm going on. Okay? And if we look at it as an educational program, if we look at it as I'm relieving my own guilt by having my cause, by trying to repair damage I did in the past, okay, then we, we know that nothing in and of itself is wrong. And so that means my having a cause is not wrong. But I need to understand, as I want to make progress toward awakening, that there are no victims. It's a training program. And therefore, I want to look at my cause as a process of forgiving myself for what I believe I did. Later, we'll find out I didn't really do it. I was just watching a movie, right? Nobody was harmed in the movie. No actors were killed, right? But I'm trying to forgive release my own guilt, forgive myself for what I believe I did, that's why I have the cause that I have. Would it be okay if we took the step which some people are doing today by having these epiphanies, having these great understandings dawn upon them, would it be okay if I took the step to say, you know, I don't need to have that cause anymore because now I understand that everything is working just to educate people no harm is being done. There are no problems. Love is all that exists. Love is the only thing that exists, which people do find out when they have these near-death experiences. Love is all that exists. So can we ignore that huge word that's used so often in the English language, be, cause? <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> I think a lot of us have taken it to heart. Yes, yes. Well, when we're not when we're just on this spiritual trip and we haven't got the deeper meaning of love and God and forgiveness, uh, those sorts of things, those are just theoretical terms to us, you know, then compassion revolves entirely about seeing something wrong and fixing it. Okay? Now, that's okay because that's part of the school. That's a step. That's fourth grade. We got to complete fourth grade before we can go to fifth grade. Okay? Now, on, on the other hand, as we awaken, we certainly drop all of our causes. Another made-up story, not true, but if we were to think of it this way. There are master teachers. There are awakened people. There are people who heal. There are people who lived hundreds of years. We have John of God who does instantaneous healings, a hundred a day. There, all things are possible now. So compassion to those who are not, who are working their way up step by step means fix what's wrong. Okay. We understand as we get a little farther up the ladder that nothing is wrong. So nothing needs fixing. So if we look at the master teachers, the awakened ones, the healers on the planet, they have done away with their own guilt. They have done away with their own fear. Okay. This doesn't mean they didn't have lifetimes in which they believed they were doing wrong and lifetimes in which they felt guilty, in which they had causes. But after we progress enough, we focus on love, we focus on healing, we focus on helpfulness, true helpfulness, not fixing what's wrong, 
But true helpfulness is helping people realize that they are perfect just the way they are. Okay? So if we look at those who are demonstrating their awakening, look at their lives, they do not have causes. So we understand there must be some shift that takes place to move from having causes to not having causes. Having causes is perfect. We got to go through that grade so we gain a little more understanding and we end up at we have no causes. It seems then when I encounter something that just really cranks my chain, it just, you know, I get excited about that one. There's what's got to be fixed. When I identify something like that, what's the next best thing for me to do if I really want to advance and move on in life? Well, you have these notes on your refrigerator and on the dashboard of your car and that sort of thing. Ask guidance what's really going on. Okay? The ego makes a snap judgment. That's wrong. Got to be wrong. I saw something harmed. I saw some damage done. I saw a car wreck. I saw something that looks to me as if it is in error. Okay. So our only choice, the only other point of view that we can get is from inside, is from our higher self, is from our connection with the spirit realms. So we get a little weird. I tell the joke sometimes that if you talk to God, that's called prayer. If God talks to you, that's called schizophrenia, right? <laughs> but we want to be schizophrenic. We want to say, Spirit, tell me the big picture. Show me what's happening. And we may get a flash of understanding about why that took place, what benefit it provided for the people who were participating and that sort of thing. So be cause, but just don't believe in it and don't get attached to it, huh? Exactly. And don't beat yourself up. We're, we're in a halfway house. We're partly karmic. We're partly awakened. We're light workers. We're here to show the way to many, many people. That doesn't mean we've finished our own perfection, finished our own awakening. Yeah. So don't beat yourself up if you catch yourself saying, that's horrible, you know, or whatever your favorite profanity is. Uh, <laughs> you know, when you see something happen, it just means, oh, I'm getting faster, I'm getting better at looking for what's really going on here from a cosmic perspective, from a divine perspective. On the web, Paxton Roby is available with a lot more information at notimeforkarma.com.